All right, so today we are doing a after the boil soup, which means after the crawfish boil. So when you do crawfish boils, a lot of people uh, throw corn and potatoes in there, people throw sausage. Um, right now what we have, and garlic, right now what we have is we've got about a half of stick of butter uh, in the pot melting. Right here we have about a pound of about a pound of crawfish tails, but we also threw garlic in there, so I, I popped out the garlic, but we also have garlic that we're gonna saute in there. This is about a tablespoon and a half. We also have two green onions. Uh, no, that, that's celery, two ribs of celery. We also have, this is almost two, one and a half cups of onion and bell pepper. Um, here we have uh, just over two cups of uh, the small new potatoes that were in a crawfish bowl. This is five ears of corn, which comes up to about uh, just under two cups. And we have probably a pound and a half uh, of andouille sausage that we threw into the crawfish bowl. So we're gonna be cooking all this with some heavy whipping cream. We might have to thicken it up with cornstarch, so um, we will be filming this. So right now, we're going in with the onions. All right, he's gonna saute on that a while. And we'll be back. Um, all right, I just wanted to add this one thing. So we've added, this is frozen bell pepper and onion. Will, why didn't you put the celery? So if you put the celery in at the same time, the celery being fresh, we just cut it out. We had a couple of ribs of celery that we cut up in the refrigerator. So with the onions and your bell peppers being frozen, if you throw your celery in at the same time, your celery's gonna turn to nothing while you're trying to defrost and saute your onions and bell peppers. So you kind of want to let your onions and bell peppers kind of defrost a little bit. Kind of start sauteing now. Once they kind of get a little translucent, you can see that they're not frozen. They soften up. Then we'll add the bell peppers in there. I mean, the, we'll add the celery in there and let the celery cook down with everything else. All right, we'll be back. And so our onions and bell peppers are soft now. You can see, you know, they're starting to sizzle away and they're starting to, you know, saute them down. So since those are soft, we're going to go ahead. We're going to go ahead and add the celery in. We're going to keep sauteing this down. Next up, the garlic, right? Yeah, but we're gonna let this get pretty much just where we want it on cooking down. And then we're gonna add the garlic. You don't wanna add your garlic in too soon. You add it in too soon and you're cooking it down, your garlic's gonna burn a lot quicker than your other vegetables will. And it's gonna, burnt garlic kind of gives off a bitter taste and that's not what we're looking for right here. And so now that we have the vegetables sauteed down pretty much where I want them, I'm going to go ahead and add our andouille into the pot, and we're going to start cooking that down a little bit with it as well. And now that we added the andouille, we're going to go ahead and add the garlic as well. And so what's the point of adding the andouille right now? So the andouille right now, I mean, after we boiled it, we've already rendered, you know, boiling it, some of the fats already come out of it. But what we're trying to do right here is just kind of let it brown up a little bit and get, let it try and render some more of that fat out just to pull a little bit more flavor out of the sausage. All right, and how long do you suspect you're going to be doing this? <clears throat> Probably say three to four minutes, just depending. I'm just waiting until it you know, have, starts having some color and starts looking the way I want it to. And after that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to add the chicken stock. Once we add the chicken stock, I'm going to reduce my chicken stock a little bit just to concentrate the flavor. The more you can take something and reduce it down into a smaller quantity, the more flavor, flavorful it's going to be. Um, so we have two quarts of chicken stock, and so we're probably going to reduce it by half and get down to a quart of chicken stock. And then from there, we'll start adding our other vegetables, our crawfish tails, our uh, heavy cream, and just get our consistency right. But I want to try and reduce that chicken stock down where it's, you know, about halfway and really get some really get more flavor out of it. And you can really smell the garlic too. It smells really good. All right, we'll be back in a few minutes. Hey. All right, so now we've been sauteing it down. You can see it's starting to get a good, <clears throat> get that good film on the bottom. You know, that's fine. Once we have that chicken stock, it's really gonna start pulling that off of there. Started rinsing out the sausage. Not much fat has come out of the sausage because we did boil it beforehand in the crawfish bowl to heat it up. It was already fully cooked. But by I'm putting the sausage in earlier and kind of sweating it down because I want it to go when I add that chicken stock. I want it to flavor that chicken stock and get some more flavor into that chicken stock with the smoke and the seasoning. And so from here, we're going to go ahead. And that fond is flavor. 
Oh, yeah, 100%. I didn't show this in the intro, but we got that's uh, two 32 ounce uh, boxes of chicken stocks. So that's 64 ounces going in. And like I said, I mean, we're adding, it's gonna look like a lot when you add it in. But what we're gonna do from right here is we're just gonna let it boil away and we're gonna, we're gonna reduce it by about half. So you added two quarts, it's gonna be one quart left over before we add your whipping cream. And another thing, we have not added any seasoning. We are not going to add season until the end until because they're the, we did some spicy crawfish. The crawfish were extra spicy. What I like to do is when I'm peeling the crawfish to make it, I'll go and I'll peel two or three and I'll take a head and squeeze it and let all that juice go onto the tails. And so that's what we did on those. So we have a, they're, they got a good heat to them. And so we're not going to touch seasoning at all until after we get those crawfish tails in there. Especially those potatoes in the corn, because the potatoes in the corn soak up a good bit of seasoning as well. So until we get all that in here, then we're going to adjust on seasoning. Until then, we're not adding anything. It's very possible we might not have to add anything. Very possible. <laughs> all right, so we're going to reduce this by half, and we'll be back. All right, as you can see, as we're reducing down this chicken stock, we have a, what would be known as a rolling boil. That is boiling, so we're you know reducing it. Um, you can see... The steam is collected on the microwave because we've got it rolling. Anyway, we'll be back in a little bit when it reduces. All right, so this has been going for well, about what, 10 minutes? 10, 15 minutes. 10, 15 minutes, so we started up about right here. And so we got it down to about half. So right now I'm gonna just turn the heat down to about a medium. Let this roll slow down a little bit. So we had the crawfish boil on Sunday, and we decided we were going to try to make an after the boil soup. We went to, you know, so to look up the recipe, uh, we do what I always do, and I went to YouTube, and we typed in after the boil soup, and there was only one recipe up there by the Cajun Ninja. And so after watching uh, what he did, we decided to give our take on the after the boil soup. I mean, it gave us some good ideas. I I cooked this a couple of weeks ago. Um, not quite this exact same way. I do like the way the andouille smells, and I do like the reduction. I think that's going to give it some flavor. But uh, for those who don't know, I mean, if you ever watched the Cajun Ninja, uh, he's got some really good, excellent cooking videos. He's a Louisiana guy. Um, but uh, he might be the Cajun Ninja, but I, I did take karate when I was younger. I don't know if you knew that or not, but uh, for those who don't know, I did. I was a ye uh, yellow belt. I th no, orange belt. I don't forget. But anyway, um, what next, Will? Cajun Ninja did his roux based, um, which is perfectly fine. We decided to not do the roux based route. Um, we don't have flour. <laughs> no, we don't have flour. But I have some cornstarch in the pantry, so what we're going to do is we see we need to thicken it up a little bit. We're just going to add a little cornstarch slurry in there. It's a lot quicker. It doesn't have that roux flavor where that, you get that nuttiness of the roux. But I think with a soup, you know, I mean, there's so many different ways you can do it. I mean, that's... You know, a gumbo is definitely roux based, but you look at other things of, you know, a shrimp and corn soup or a crawfish and corn soup and stuff like that. Those are, you know, cream based. So we just went ahead with the cream base, the cream based soup instead of a roux base. And you added heavy whipping cream, but we also have uh, half and half. We also have some half and half, just in case we're going to taste it and kind of see. We're going to let the let the heavy cream cook a little bit. Um, kind of let that thicken up a little bit, reduce just a little bit. We're not going to reduce it like we did the chicken stock where it's on this huge rolling boil. We're just going to bring it up to the simmer, kind of let it simmer for a little while. And then from there, we'll see if we need to add some half and half. You know, I, picked, I had the extra heavy whipping cream in the fridge, and I picked up some half and half. Um, but if need be, we can thicken it with cornstarch. Absolutely. But we might not need to. We don't know. All right, so we're going to let this uh, reduce a little bit. We'll be back. So just from the look of it right here, I'm thinking that we're going to need to add that little half and half. I just want to get it up. I don't want it to be, I want to have a little bit of liquid in it. Um, and looking at what we have on potatoes, corn, and crawfish tails, and with the andouille already in there, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and add some of that half and half in there. And just let it keep cooking down. Are you going to add half? So I'm probably going to add half of the half and half. <laughs> so probably about right there. I like the way that looks. Are we going in? When are we going in with the uh, 
crawfish and so stuff. So we're gonna let this come up to another simmer again. Once it comes up to a simmer, I'm just trying to let it all kind of cook and blend together and get all those flavors incorporated into one another. Um, probably gonna let this simmer for about three to four minutes, and then we're gonna go ahead and add our crawfish, our corn, our potatoes. Once we add that, then we're gonna check it for, first we're gonna check it for seasoning, and then after that, if we wanna thicken it up a little bit, we'll make a corn starch slurry and add that corn starch slurry in there, just to thicken it up a little bit. But for right now, we're just gonna let this come up to a simmer and let it simmer for about three to four minutes. This is quarantining at its finest. And though I haven't been to Hooters in almost a month, Hooters is here in spirit. Let's see. And then Katie, she used to work at the one at Segan briefly. All right, so as you can see, we've got a good simmer going right now. We're gonna go ahead, it's all been in there. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna add our potatoes. Our corn. And our crawfish tails. And now with the crawfish tails, we squeezed all the heads of garlic in there. That's, I mean, it has some garlic flavor, but as soft as it, as soft as it is, and it already being cooked out in the water, it doesn't really have that much of a garlic flavor. So we save that to the end. Mmm. So now how long are you going to let this simmer? So we'll probably let this simmer for about another three to five minutes. I mean, everything's fully cooked. We'll just let it heat up. Let that, you know, let pretty much our stock that we made with the andouille, the heavy cream, and the and the chicken chicken broth just kind of get in all there and soak into all those potatoes and, and the corn and the crawfish tails. Let that seasoning cook out of those crawfish tails a little bit and season up the whole soup. So we'll sit here and let this simmer. And I'm really glad I added that extra half and half because it's perfect. It's pretty, it's it's chunky, which is what we were looking for. But if I wouldn't have added that little extra bit, I think it'd have been a little too much. So that'll be perfect. We'll let that simmer, and then after that simmers and cooks down, we'll see if we want to thicken it up a little bit. We'll hit it with a little cornstarch slurry, mix it in there. But other than that, we're just gonna let it simmer away, and we'll see y'all back in a few minutes. All right, so we have everything into the pot. Um, Will's gonna stir it up. It's simmering a little bit. He's gonna take a little taste. Remember, we said we weren't gonna taste it till the end. All right, your thoughts? So, I mean, you definitely have the crawfish flavor in there. It definitely comes on the back end. I mean, you still have that, you definitely have that crawfish bowl flavor. That cayenne is definitely there. It just, I think it needs a little salt and a little pepper. So we're gonna go ahead, go ahead and add that. And then I want to thicken it up a little bit more, so I'm probably going to do probably start off with about a tablespoon of cornstarch. Another thing with using cornstarch, you never just want to take the powdered cornstarch and put it straight in. You have to mix it with cold water. If it goes into something hot, it clumps up immediately. So you mix it in the cold water and you add it. But with using cornstarch, you have to watch when you're thickening something up. You can always add more, but you can't take it out. You'd have to, you know, <clears throat> with this, we if we you know if we thicken it up too much, we'd have to add. Some more half and half, some water, we have, you know, some extra chicken stock, add a little bit of extra chicken stock, um, you know, to make sure. So we'll go, go ahead and add a little salt. A pinch of pepper. I'm a big fan of black pepper. Me too, so you can't put too so, much. <laughs> I don't think you can put too much black pepper. I've done it once before when I was living in Pennsylvania. I was cooking red beans and rice and I was drunk. And uh, I put a little bit too much pepper in red beans and rice. <laughs> so I love black pepper. I love the flavor. I think it can really help right here. Because you catch that crawfish ball and that cayenne on the back end. When you originally taste it, I mean, the first thing you taste is, you know, that cream, that chicken stock, you know, how rich it is. Um, and so I just, you know, it, it doesn't have that upfront flavor that that salt's going to make it pop. And then black pepper's going to, you know, you're going to get that first. And then on the back end, you're going to get that... Uh, that cayenne and that crawfish boil. So I'm gonna go ahead. Make sure that that water's cold because I had it on hot. All right. So about That's a tablespoon. Oh, look, my vodka made an appearance. And you just want to mix it till it's dissolved. So 
So there we go. And when you add the cornstarch, you want to make sure you add kind of a simmer. So we're going to go ahead and add it. It's starting to tighten up a little bit. One more? I might go ahead and get one more just to get a little bit thicker, but I'm going to let it cook for a second and just see. Uh, you don't, it, don't want it too thick? It looks pretty good to me right now. But it's still, I don't know, to me it's still a little runny. We can add another one. I think I heard it. All right, we don't need to show that. We'll be back. Ready? Go. So we got it turned off, we had our extra cornstarch, we kind of got it to the consistency we wanted. So it's a little bit, you can see, I mean, it's not super thick, but it has a, it has that viscosity to it, that thickness to it that we're looking for, you know, for a soup. Look at those chunks. So we're gonna go ahead. You're probably gonna leave some of the chunks out this time and go more of the juice. Absolutely. There you go. All right, give it a try. And if I had some fresh green onions or some parsley that we could chop up on top, I'm sure that wouldn't be bad. But we're going to go ahead and give it a shot. Well, we should get Mau Mau to taste it. For our first time, I think we nailed it. Yeah. And uh, real quick before we go, I would like to give a shout out to all the people I enjoy watching. Um, I mentioned the Cajun Ninja, but Russ Jones with Smoky Ribs Barbecue, um, JB Fols with Louisiana Cajun Cuisine. Um, if you uh, enjoyed this video, go follow them too. They got some great videos as well. Um, you know, uh, I love watching uh, sous vide everything. We got to, you know, we're gonna be sous vide some stuff coming up here soon. Um, and e even Philly Boy J up in Philly, he cooks some great dishes. So uh, go check them out, but I hope you enjoy this. Give this a try. It absolutely is delicious, and I'm not just making that up. Any sign-off? Uh, no. There you go. Chris especially Foods. <laughs>